hello guys good morning this is life issue and this is blessing thank you so much for coming to my channel now if you've not subscribed to our channel please help me hit the red button so that you can get the news once we upload it all right on wednesday we all saw the rioting and the occupation of the capital i mean for me personally i was shocked because america well it, is, it has been one of those strong democracy i mean one of those strong advocates of democracy around the world and for us to see the pictures and the video for us to be glued to our tv watching what was happening it was alarming i mean i was in the room watching cnn with my son and he saw everything and he was just shouting But the question we should ask ourselves is, how did we get here? What actually happened in the system? I mean, as the many head of state, prominent people talk about this issue, you know, state their mind about what happened. The question we need to ask ourselves is, how did we get here? What actually happened? How did the Republican Party allow this to happen i mean we know we have seen so many of trump's inciting and provocative tweets over the years but he was not censored the republican stood by him when i saw what happened the only thing i could say was it was going to lead to something like this it was definitely going to lead to something like this because Republican, right from the first day, he started saying that the election was fraudulent. They did not come out. Uh, for me as a black person, when I remember what happened during Black Life Matters and what happened and what we saw, I was shocked. I was shocked as a system that could allow people white privileged people to run rampage on their capital hall on the in the offices you know <laughs> i don't know how i don't know what you guys saw i saw the american america divided i saw a country that is actually rooted in racism i mean i'm showing you guys different pictures of what happened during La um, black life matters and what happened during this occupation of the capital and you could see the different way it was handled i came across this video that i'm going to show you now and i want us to listen to her analyze what happened and let's see if we agree with her so let's listen to this woman analyze what happened. And she's one person that I've listened to. And I totally agree with what she had to say. So let's listen to her. Claire talked about that these people were so unafraid of the cops who were sparsely distributed through our capital, which hasn't been breached since 1812 when it was burned. The reason they could easily and casually with their cameras on, film themselves throwing things through the walls of our Capitol, our property, going inside the Capitol, sitting in uh, Speaker Pelosi's office, casually take pictures of themselves, have that played on Fox News. They know that they are not in jeopardy because the cops are taking selfies with them, walking them down the steps to make sure they're not hurt, taking care with their bodies, not like they treated Freddie Gray's body. 
White Americans aren't afraid of the cops. White Americans are never afraid of the cops, even when they're committing insurrection, even when they're engaged in attempting to occupy our capital to steal the votes of people who look like me. Because in their minds, they own this country, they own that capital, they own the cops, the cops work for them, and people like me have no damn right to try to elect a president. Because we don't get to pick the president, they get to pick the president, they own the president, they own the White House, they own this country. And so when you think you own it, you own the place, you ain't afraid of the police because the police are you and the police reflect back to them. We're with you. You're good. We're not going to hurt you because you're not them. Guarantee you if that was a Black Lives Matter protest in D.C., there would already be people shackled, arrested or dead. Shackled, arrested, en masse or dead. Cunningham on here. She'll tell you how they treated her in Ferguson. Put Alicia Garza on here. She'll tell you how they treated her at every Black Lives Matter march. Get Patrice Cullors on. They'll tell you. They'll tell you what it feels like to protest peacefully and unarmed and have how the police will treat you if you're black. That's it. They're not afraid of the cops because they know the cops are cool with it. This is not just about America. This is not just about Capitol Hall. This is not about the march. Is about the whole system and the way the white privileged people look down on the black community. This is happening in our organization, in our offices, where as a black person, you are shut down, you are looked down on because you are black. Okay. You know, when you talk about racism, I, sometimes I just have this, I don't know how to put it, this feeling that they don't even understand when they are being racist. I, 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 that's, that's the only thing I could say. When the white privilege people, they are, some of them are so blinded to the fact that they are being racist or that what they are doing is wrong. I was speaking to someone the other day and she was telling me that in her office, yeah, when she does certain things because she's black, they call it that she's aggressive, she's angry, you know, she rants. But when a white privileged person, a white colleague does almost the same thing, they actually say that this person has an OCD, this person has um, a problem mental or, you know, it's like as if you as a black person, you cannot get depressed, you cannot have any mental issue, you are okay, you are actually, it is your way of doing things, you, have, you don't have a problem, but the excuse the white privileged people because they are privileged. It is their company or it is their organization. It is their country. And, you know, when I was talking to this person, it's funny because we are first generation living, living, you know, in the country that we live in. She, her great grandmother was born here. She is going to like throw the four generation living in the country where I live in. And I'm like, if you that can speak and is actually, she's not even black, black, she's black minority, like black colored. Do you understand? I mean, like Asian kind of black. If she could feel that way, if she feels that way, what about us who are black, black? You know, when I was listening to what this woman is saying, I just, it just re, re echoes what is happening in our society where some people feel because we are, a particular minority, we don't have a voice. We shouldn't be talking. We don't have an idea. When your ideas are being shut down because you are a black minority person or Asian minority, because you don't know how to think. But you know, funny enough, the same people, when they come up with your idea, it is actually, oh yeah, that's fine. It happens almost every day. You know, I've I've come to a point in my life whereby I don't even bother myself giving ideas anymore. I don't even, sometimes I don't even talk anymore because your ideas are not being appreciated. What bother? I know people will say, oh, I'm too old to, to give myself that headache anymore. I don't even bother anymore. But this is what we're saying. They cannot, it is possible for them to phantom the fact that a black person can be their boss that a black person can take over an organization and become a manager, that a black person can actually direct them. I've had conversation 
or remarks over the years and over the weeks where someone actually says someone is not wanted here. We don't want her kind. And I was like, what is her kind? What do you mean by her kind? I mean, I don't want to go into some, you know, details of things. But the point is, when these people talk, when they actually talk, they don't see, they don't actually see the racism in them. They don't actually know that they are racist. To them, it is okay for them to feel that. I, I mean, I used to have conversation with my cousins back before um, the pandemic. And they would say, America is a no man's land. Everybody's free. It's the land of the... And I'm like, okay... But Trump administration, Trump being in power, it has opened the pandemic in the system. I mean, I, I, I just, when I saw the video, when I saw everything that happened in the capital, I just, because I've been there before and I know how fortified that place is, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe that they let them get that close. I'm going to show you a video i mean this video tells us everything that we need to know about what is happening watch this and listen to this man talk hi this is frank schaefer i used to be an evangelical right-wing extremist i quit the evangelical movement and fled and for the last 35 almost 40 years i have been a liberal activist my father francis schaefer called for violent overthrow of the U.S. government in his last book, A Christian Manifesto, where he said that if Roe v. Wade wasn't reversed and abortion made illegal by democratic means, then we had a right to revolution. Well, last night when the Capitol was attacked, the evangelicals who were in the forefront of that attack were the kind of people who were influenced by him or influenced by people who were influenced by him. My family, was responsible, and I was responsible. As, without evangelical participation, Trump would not be president. If you want to personally thank someone who made Trump president, talk to Franklin Graham of the Billy Graham organization. Talk to Ralph Reed, the political operative who cashes in again and again and fundraises and makes millions off his evangelical activism. America does not have a political problem. We have a religious fanaticism problem without which none of this would have happened. If it wasn't for evangelical churches, organizations, pastors, newsletters, radio hosts, going along with Trump's lies, supporting them, supporting him when he was elected, supporting him through his villainous presidency and even to today, we would not be where we are. We have squeaked by, by the skin of our teeth, of having a democracy this morning at all. We are only barely hanging on with our fingernails at this point. But the media does not get it. They have never taken the evangelical movement seriously. They talk about the Rust Belt. They talk about Appalachia. They talk about the low pay of working class America. All true, but they ignore because they are afraid to delve into and get into the truth of what white evangelicalism has become, which is a white nationalist racist movement, xenophobic, myth-based. We are now a mockery of China and Russia. We are now a mockery of dictatorships all over the world who looked at that invasion as proof that America is failing. Vladimir Putin won. We lost. Put it that way. Now today, Trump still is in office for a few more days, and he is going to continue to do incalculable damage to America. But none of this, I repeat, is possible without understanding that we have been in a war of religion where fundamentalist evangelical white Christians and their conservative Roman Catholic allies have pitted themselves against our democracy because what they really want is a theocracy. What they aim for is America to become an evangelical Christian bigoted version of Iran. I come from that background. I knew the key players in the 70s and 80s that started all this. Trump would not be where he is today without 40 years of evangelical, hate-filled, anti-American propaganda that has debased debate on race, on gender, on feminism, has gone after women and gay people, transgenders, black people. Enough is enough. 
And I call on the U.S. media and anyone who sees this video to spread this word. The party of theocracy is at the root of our problems. That's why they cling to their guns. That's why they arm themselves, because they want this country ruled not by democracy, but by theocrats that impose an evangelical fundamentalist slash Roman Catholic vision of morality on America, on other citizens who do not buy into it. And that's why they tried to engineer and stack the courts. And that's why they listened when Trump rejected the election results and lied and said the election was stolen. Fundamentally, these people are not interested in democracy. They are theocrats. Get it through your head from someone who was there and help make this tragedy happen. Even though I was a young, stupid, greedy man who changed his mind, nevertheless, I was there. It's not about politics. It's about theocracy versus democracy. Evangelicals are now the nexus of opposition to American democracy and patriotism. My name is Frank Schaefer. All right, guys. So when I watch Frank Schaefer's you know, video, it brought to mind to what is happening in Africa. It's not just in America. Our pastors have become demigod. They are making prophecies that are not in any way linked to the Bible. They are making the people not to listen to the government. They are calling the governments different names. They are actually becoming a lord unto themselves. I have for so many, you know, days tried not to, you know, talk about pastors and want to get myself involved in. But when I saw this man's video, he just said everything I want to say. I don't even need to add anything. The point is many of these things that are happening or that happened in America was engineered by religious bigots. Okay. These were people that propelled this man, told him that he's the anointed, that God has revealed this to him. This was what happened in America. That was how America went down. The same thing is happening in Africa. I have people worshipping pastors more than worshipping God. Some people don't even know the Bible anymore. It is now my pastor said, my pastor said. Some people even quote the word of God and I don't even know that it's the word of God because it is my pastor said. Some people don't even question the prophecies or the doctrine that they hear. Some pastors have turned into political analysts instead of preaching the word of God. And this is where we are heading in Africa if we don't take time. Thank God American democracy withstood the time, test of time because it has withstood a lot of trials before. Africa, the same thing that is happening in America is happening in Africa. I'm telling you. Where a pastor decides that the government directives should not be obeyed because he is God. But then the same Bible that he reads tells him that you need to obey the law of the land. But he doesn't look at that one. He tells you that the government will be changed. You know, he can insult the government. He can insult anybody. He can even bring down fire and brimstone on anybody that is against his word. But once you try to criticize or talk about what they've said, they will say, come up with touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. You don't have any right to judge another person's servant. Is that not hypocrisy? I mean, I've seen it all. But what happened in America, to be frank with you, is actually a tip of the iceberg is a tip of the eyes of what is happening or is about to happen in Africa. Boko Haram is being engineered by people. All these insurgence that is happening, all these riot that is going on, constantly comes in the pulpit and gives you guys an ideology, tells you the, tells you the world is about to end. I had someone just sold his property. A man just sold his property. He had a house. He sold it because 
Jesus is coming soon in three or four years' time. Because he had someone preaching that. Prepare for Jesus to come. Ideology. I mean, thank God America withstood this. But when I saw these videos, I just had to do this because I, I, I like enlightening people. I like people to watch what I watch and to see what I've seen. We need to be very careful. American believed or followed the doctrine of a man who wanted to enrich himself, who used them for his purpose. He's now, I had that he had a fund, he's fundraising um, for fighting against the rigged election or the fraudulent election. He has made billions out of the masses. He knew he wasn't good. He knew that what he was saying was wrong, but he wanted to make money and he has made the money and that money will go with him after the inauguration. This is what happens when people don't follow God and they follow men. Thank you guys for watching. What do you think about this video? Drop your comments. God bless you.